Now, before I get into what I'm about to get into, I just want to make sure that each and every one of you guys hit that like or dislike button, put some Coach K full court pressure on that notification bell, so you can be notified each and every time I upload a video or go live on my YouTube channel. And once again, this is your boy E Thriller. Welcome back. Now, first things first, Terrence Crawford has ruffled a lot of feathers yet again. Uh, for a guy that you guys claim that can't sell pay-per-views, you understand what I'm saying, who isn't a big draw, who isn't a factor in the welterweight division or in the sport of boxing, you know, this guy, whenever he speaks, you guys take what he say and run with it. I mean, it, I, I mean, he just went viral yesterday because he said something about the great Canelo Alvarez that I sort of agreed with uh, to a certain extent. He said, and I quote, on Canelo, he shied away from Jamal Charlo and Andrade for a long time when you look at canelo's career it's like he shied away from black fighters i think the black fighters give him the most problems now terence crawford has a hell of a point and i know a lot of canelo fanboys are going to take this shit and run with it they already been bashing canelo and i get it it's okay canelo is above criticism canelo is above reproach nobody can say anything about the great motherfucking canelo alvarez hell terence bud crawford I've taken plenty of slack on my channel for saying things about Canelo, and I'm a Canelo fan. Canelo is my second favorite boxer in a sport today. But whenever you keep it real or whenever you state facts on a certain fighter, that fan base is going to attack you no matter what. And it makes it a hundred times worse whenever you are the number one pound for pound king in Terrence Bud Crawford. Yeah, I said it. When you speak this shit, because you are in the sport of boxing, you know the ins and out. You're in that fucking fraternity, that small fraternity of fighters that knows what is going on behind the scenes, right? So for him to say that, I mean, I, I think he has a lot of points. He has a lot of credence because I know Canelo fought uh, uh, Austin Trout. I know Canelo fought a Sugar Shane Mosley, but he was over the hill. I know a Canelo fought the TBE and Floyd Mayweather, but Floyd was old as well. You understand what I'm saying? And I know he fought a Miguel Cotto. I mean, this man has one hell of a resume. An argument could be made that Canelo has one of, if not the best resumes in the sport of boxing today, right? But having said all of that, make no mistake about it, at 160 pounds, Canelo Alvarez had the chance to become undisputed. He had three titles. All he had to go do was get that fourth strap from a Demetrius Andrade, right? And it didn't happen. And I want to know why. Why? What would make Canelo Alvarez move up in weight, drop all of his belts at the 160-pound division to move up to 168 before becoming undisputed if he didn't see Andrade? or Charlo as a threat to his throne. Because Canelo said, and I quote, the truth is he hasn't fought anyone. He hasn't fought against anyone. And he's also boring, very boring. Maybe he's a good fighter, but he's a boring fighter. And at the end of the day, when there's a boring fight, people are going to blame me. I like fights where there's action, where people can enjoy a good show. That's very important to me. But also, he doesn't represent a challenge for me as well because he hasn't fought against anybody. And that is Canelo talking about Demetrius Andrade. So haven't you guys noticed this? And I, I, I believe I've said this a million times, man, and I'll say it again. The most popular thing to do in the sport of boxing today, whenever you're on top and whenever there's a legitimate threat, to you know your your style or your throne per se what do the fighters like to do they either like to say a he doesn't have a belt or b he's a boring fighter or c he ain't fought nobody or d he can't sell pay-per-views you understand what i'm saying and canelo is saying that about demetrius and none of that shit really matters because at the end of the day if you want to go down as one of the greatest Mexican Mexican fighters in the sport of boxing, because hell, that's what you've said on multiple occasions. I didn't set that goal for yourself. You did, right? So don't come at your boy E Thriller talking shit, saying I'm this and I'm that. I'm just holding this man to his word, just like I hold Terrence Crawford to his words, Earl Spence to his words, Teofimo Lopez, Tyson Fury, Deontay Wilder, Anthony Joshua, Triple G, Charlo. The list goes on and on, right? So we can't stop at Canelo just because we like him. Fuck all of that. 
So if we're going to hold Canelo Alvarez to those standards that he set upon himself, then why hasn't he fought the top guys, black guys, at 160 pounds? I wait. I fucking wait. Because it's easy to say, oh, this dude ain't fought nobody. He ain't going to be a tough fight for me. Well, motherfucker, prove it. Prove it. That's all I'm saying. And I'm not here to bash Canelo. But the facts are facts. You know, the same way that you guys love to criticize Terrence Crawford and his resume or lack thereof, claiming he ain't fought nobody at 147 pounds. Well, the same argument can be made against Canelo Alvarez at 160 pounds because he ducked the two most dangerous fighters in the 160 pound division. And that is a fact. That is not fiction. And I'm not a big Charlo fan, nor am I an Andrade fan by any means. But those guys do pose a threat to Canelo to a certain extent. And I want to see how the fight plays out. Now, of course, I'm going to pick Canelo to beat both of them. But this is all based on my opinion. This isn't a fact, which is what is so great about the sport of boxing. Because at the end of the day, we don't definitively know who is going to win until they get into the ring? That's why everybody want to see EJ versus Bud. That is why everybody wants to see Canelo versus Charlo, Canelo versus Benavidez, Canelo versus Andrade. You understand what I'm saying? That's why we want to see these fights because we don't know. We want to see how this shit plays out. But to say that Terrence Bud Crawford is ridiculous or to give this man criticism for stating blatant facts... I mean, what else is new, man? I mean, Terrence Crawford can do no wrong, but I kind of like this. I kind of like that Terrence Crawford is speaking up and speaking out against motherfuckers and speaking up for himself because, hey, play the bad guy. Be the bad guy. Be the villain. Be the heel. Do whatever the hell you got to do. Fuck the fans. You understand what I'm saying? Because at the end of the day, if this is what's going to help sell your fights, hey, then half at it. But as far as this, I don't think he was trying to promote himself or trying to big up himself. He was just calling the spade a spade when it comes to Canelo because I've said it before and I'll say it again. And I just want to know why. And this this is a question for all of you Canelo fanboys, right? Why do you guys feel like Canelo is so fucking indestructible? Like, he can't lose. Like, we haven't seen him lose before because Floyd Mayweather schooled him. I feel like Laura won that fight, but he got robbed, right? And I feel like he had not one, but two close fights that could have went either way against Gennady Golovkin. You follow what I'm saying? So, I mean, if we keeping it a book in the first fight, you know, when I watched it the first time, I feel like Canelo won. But I've watched that fight, I don't know how many times now. And whenever I watch it with the volume off, I feel like Triple G won the fight because Canelo, he tends to gas out. And when he gas out, he rests for like two minutes in a round. But the first minute of the round, he'll keep the fight in the middle of the ring. But outside of that, Canelo likes to lay on the ropes and try to counter you with an uppercut or a check left hook. That's what Canelo did. And Triple G, the smart fighter that he is, and I, <laughs> Lord forgive me for saying this, but I am not a Triple G fan by any means. So I don't want you guys to think I'm just being biased against Canelo, right? Triple G didn't fall for the traps. He threw a lot of jabs. He really didn't go to the body a ton, but he controlled the fight with his ring generalship and his jab. And I feel like he won an easy decision, seven rounds to five, in my honest opinion, in the first fight. And then the second fight is debatable because Canelo, who came forward, he fought the more Mexican-style fight because Triple G was bitching and complaining and saying, oh, Canelo ran the whole first fight. So Canelo said, all right, you know what? Fuck that. I'm coming straight forward. I want to back you up and beat you at your own game. And an argument can be made that Canelo did just that. He landed the more effective power shots down low. Triple G landed some up top. And there, there was a lot of give and take in that fight, but I wouldn't be mad for anybody saying Canelo won, nor would I be mad at anyone for saying that Triple G won. You understand what I'm saying? But the point I'm trying to make is, why do you guys act like Canelo can't lose? I don't get it. Like, we've seen Canelo struggle against fighters who use their legs, who are slick, and don't take a lot of risk. Because an argument can also be made, and I hope you're sitting down for this, that Canelo was down on the scorecards against Amir Khan. He was getting outboxed by Amir Khan, the guy with no fucking chin. Before Canelo sent him to 
sleep experts, and that is a fact. I don't give a damn who don't like it, but hey, I got to call a spade or spade on my channel. It is what it is. But do I agree with Terrence Crawford? Absolutely. To a certain extent. And I wholeheartedly agree with what he's saying when Canelo was at 160. But what do I know? But once again, I want to thank everybody for listening to this video. If you haven't done so already, hit that like or dislike button on your way out. And until next time, I'm gone. Holla.